Doodle bud. Putting some gloves on today because we're going to be testing for lead. Now, brass is commonly used to make, well, tons of things, but we're a fountain pen channel here, so it's it's used a lot in, in fountain pen bodies making fountain pens. It's an alloy of copper and zinc, and of course, there's other stuff mixed in there, and sometimes there can be a little bit of lead in the brass. What that does is it helps with machinability, uh, so it's, it's actually a good property in a lot of the brass, but it, people get a little freaked out when you hear lead. You think lead poisoning, you might be thinking Flint, Michigan, well, that's a little bit different. You're ingesting lead through pipes that are leaching lead into the water system. That's really the way that you you, you get really sick and, and die from uh, lead poisoning. But can you touch brass that has a little bit of lead in it? A very popular brass is CZ121. So it's copper zinc is the main alloys and there's about 3% of it is brass that's helping with the machinability. Now, if you touch that, is that gonna be a problem? Well, I'm going to go through, we're going to test all these pens. I'll, I'll give some background on lead and what you're going to watch out for and how that relates to fountain pens. So I just picked these up, of course, got them on Amazon. We uh, They expire about two years after they're made. So that's uh, something to note as well if you're playing at home. And all you do, according to the instructions, you just dip this in water. I'm in going to use the distilled water to keep it clean. Don't want to interfere with it and then you're just gonna swab whatever it is you're working with, and then if it changes color, then you know there's some lead in there. So they even here, they are, they're letting you know no lead if it's sort of a yellow color, and then as it goes along, when it starts turning this pinky red color, that's signifying the detection of lead. So we gotta start off, we gotta do a control, and uh, you gotta find something that where they say there's no lead, so solder is something where a lot of times you can have lead in solder, but there's also lead-free solder. We have lead-free solder right there. So let's just give this a try. You dip it, and you just get it to sort of a mustard color that we got going on here on the swab. We're going to give it a rub. So that's pretty much, there we go. you got to give it a second now, nice and yellow. We're going to rub it for about 30 seconds and see if it turns red or pink. Now one thing to keep in mind when it comes to lead poisoning, that really happens, as I mentioned, through, say, ingesting it, whether it is through drinking water, if you're exposed to lead fumes, lead dust, that type of stuff. They actually said it uh, was po you know, possibly partially responsible for the downfall of the Roman Empire. They loved their lead, all their plumbing, their aqueducts were made from lead, cups and pots. They even had a lead syrup. So uh, to sweeten things, they had lots of grapes. They would cook those down, but they found if you used... A lead pot it made it even sweeter so we kind of stayed that mustardy yellow color and this is lead free solder so what we're gonna do is find some other solder I got kicking around the house and I didn't know what this is but then I saw the label down here it says bird the first part of that label will say early for early bird it'd say uh, you know where you get your uh, earlier version of Home Depot where you get some of your stuff you need to fix around the house. Remember going down there with my dad. So I think this, somehow I inherited this from his toolbox and ended up in mine. And I guarantee, even just from the color of it and the feel of it, I'm 99% sure this has lead in it. So again, we got a little color change. I think that has to do with me having it out for a bit. Let's rub it and see how quickly this goes. I'm assuming this is gonna turn a bright red. You could, yeah, I don't have to do the full 30 seconds. So that's what we're looking for. That yellowy color, that's no lead. That color, we got lead. So now we know these work and uh, what to look for. Let's start checking out some pens. When I thought of which pens do I want to check first, I grabbed this one. This is a essentially a, a copy-ish. And it's not a, they're not trying to sell it as the same one, but the design comes right from a very, very popular pen from Caveco, the Caveco Sport. Caveco makes theirs in brass as well. Very, very popular pen. Here's sort of a cheap version of it. You get these for, I don't know, four or five bucks, something like that. It's brass. It has a coating. So some people say, oh, if you're worried about lead content in your pens, just give it a clear coat and that way it'll protect you. And, and there's vali uh, validity to that statement. I sanded this down, I removed that coating and let's give this a swab. So here we go. We got that mustard yellow color. There is still like a little bit of red tinge to it if you can see that, but let's give this a go. It's been about 30 seconds now. And actually I think the only color we got on there was from the ink on the pen. Let me 
Let me uh, get this out of the way so I'm getting just the brass. And it really seems like we're still in the yellow. Got a touch of red there, but I, I, it really seems like it's not turning color. Remember, that's what we're looking for, and I was rubbing it just right there in the center. So the cheapest brass pen I have kicking around of any of them I thought would have lead in it, uh, turns out this one passes the test. The one I was really contacted about was this here. This is the Mahjong A1. Looks exceptionally like the oh-so-popular Pilot Vanishing Point. And so what I'm going to do, I have two of them. I'm going to check the paint on here. We really don't want lead paint. That was another way to get it, uh, especially with kids, with kids' toys. There used to be paint, uh, lead in the paint. Maybe in some places there still are, but kids suck on things. They put everything in their mouths. So if you have a toy with lead paint, that's how it's getting into their system. It's not really from touching it. It's from uh, sucking on it. So I'm going to check the paint on here. And what I also did is I buffed out some of the paint on the back, polished it up. We got straight brass there that actually might look kind of cool on the pen, but that's a side note. Uh, we're going to swab it there as well. These two almost match in color. Let's give that a go. Okay, 30 seconds. We got no change in color. It's still that yellow. Let's go to the brass button here on the back since it's still wet and give this one. 30 seconds is up, and no, nothing on that whatsoever. I'm kind of curious, so let's try this little dishwasher fitting and see what happens on this one. We're still yellow. Yeah, I didn't have to do 30 seconds, and you can see it's already turning red. So the swab is still picking up lead, and no surprise, there's probably, you know, I don't know if it's that exact same alloy, but there's a little bit of lead in this piece. And so that lets you know that there is an allowable limit, even on something that is going to have water going through it that can come into your system. Now, I don't think you're drinking the dishwater, but there's other bits like you can use this in other parts of your plumbing and materials like this. Um, there's probably a little bit of lead in them. Now, there, there are lead-free brass fittings for sure, but here we are, checked a couple of pens, no, no lead in those. So here is a favorite pen of mine. This is my Faber-Castell E-Motion. It's a brass body pen. Gorgeous knurling on it, nice coating on there too. Um, now let's pretend this was a raw brass pen, you know, and let's pretend we'll we'll test it because there's some raw brass down there, so we're gonna test that. But you have the coating on here to stop you from touching it if there is any lead in that brass. It's maximum three percent, but even then, if this was a raw brass pen, you're only really coming into skin contact. The only way you might have an issue is if it was raw brass. It does have a very small lead content in it, and you literally have to suck on this pen to have any type of way to get it into you. But let's test it anyways. And just wait for it to turn yellow so everything's absorbed. Okay, we'll hit this part of the pen here and rub it around. Don't even have to do the 30 seconds, and you can see it's not super strong, so it was pretty intense on some of these other ones. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, not quite as deep and pronounced. So there it most likely seems to be like there's a little bit of lead in this brass. Let's check the clip here on my Kaveco Sport. It's plastic body, but we got a clip. I believe this clip is brass. Let's give this a swab. So here we are, nice and yellow. I can already see it turning color. Yeah, and there we go. There's a teeny little bit of lead in this brass. I absolutely love this pen. This is made by Lamy. This is the Dialogue 3. This is a brass body pen. And you have a blank and it'll, it'll get drawn out. So even the manufacturing on this is pretty slick. We got a black coating, but down in there, you can see we got the brass. So let's get out a swab and do this one. I believe that's the color we're going for going in. And let's do some swabbing. All right, what do we got? Okay, nothing, nothing on that one. Let's check this other pen while I have the fresh swab. This is a Diplomat Excellence A2. Love this pen, fantastic. We have a beautiful brass made pen with this, you know, Kenny Apple Red paint job on there. And there is that insert. So let's check that side. Don't have to go too long, we're already changing color. Again, not the darkest, but it's detecting a little bit of lead in that brass. Sometimes you need to hunt around to find the brass down in here. Uh, the lighting's bad, but there is a little brass screw to hold on the clip. Let's go down in there and just 
check that out since we're doing this anyways. Here we are going in. Let's have a look and see. And yeah, we're getting just a little bit of red in there. So most likely that particular piece of brass has a very small amount of lead in it. So I could go on and on and test every single pen I have. This wouldn't even come close to all of them. Uh, and also some will maybe be a plastic body or a different material, but there could be little brass bits that's in there. Do we need to test all those parts? What will happen is some components will have a little bit of lead in that particular brass piece and other components elsewhere on the, on the pen might be lead-free brass. Does it mean that it's good or is it bad if it's lead-free brass? Well, let's think about this. Really, the only way to get lead into your system to cause really bad effects is you have to ingest it somehow. So whether it's through fumes, whether it's organic leads, uh, leaching into your food and to drink all that stuff into the dirt, into the soil, food that is grown into very high lead concentrated soil can leach into the food. You eat that food and you get it in. That's really the way it comes into your system. Now, through contact, of course, I'm wearing gloves because I didn't want to stain my hands. I don't know if this stuff's going to stain me or whatever it is. If you're handling brass as it is, these pipe fittings, you're putting pipes together all day long. It's, if it's just through skin contact, it's this is really a non-issue. If you need to sand something, so if this part is all gnarly or whatever it is you got to do, I am uh, hitting this with my laser. Let's say I want to get rid of this pattern and start fresh again or polish it up, see how that looks. Definitely wear hand protection and respiratory protection when you're sanding. It is a very small amount that's in here, but it's still high, you know advisable anyways to really min minimize the chances. If one of these pens was fully uncoated and was made from a brass alloy where there's a little bit of lead in it, would I be worried about lead poisoning? Goose egg. No, I would not. I would not be worried about that whatsoever. And a lot of times it's little parts that are inside these pens. But, you know, even the clip here, oh my gosh, if you have your hand and uh, start rubbing that clip, are you going to get lead poisoning from that? <laughs> no. So while I understand the concern, no one wants to get lead poisoning, let's really first understand how do you get lead poisoning, what are the causes and what are the methods to get poisoned with lead, and let's avoid those, and it's really through ingesting it into your system somehow. It's not through handling products unless it's really, really extreme and it's pretty much just straight lead will you have any type of absorption through your skin uh, and impact your body whatsoever. So. I would, you know, whether a certain pen model has 100% lead-free brass or it doesn't, or maybe certain components within a pen do or don't, I really wouldn't worry about it. If you have uh, one of these pens, now it was interesting that the ones that people suspect were saying, oh, they use uh, bad brass that has lead in it. Well, <laughs> it was actually these ones here in the super cheap one that didn't show any testing of lead whatsoever. So that's a little bit ironic at the end of the day. But if, let's say they did test positive this pen or any of the pens here, the coating came off and you're in direct contact with that, should you be scared? I would say no. And I saw just how cool this looked. And so I think I actually might play around with this pen and get some shiny brass going on there. We'll leave it there. Again, I'm not an expert in the field. Sharing a little bit of background information, how you can do this test if you want to yourself but I wouldn't worry about it. I'm not worried about it whatsoever. I'm sure I'll hear a mouthful down there in the description. I'll try my best to reply if I can. I'd like you to hit the subscribe button if you can. Anyways, we'll leave it there for now and we'll catch you next time.